I hope that we've put together a set of pictures that reflect incredibly important events that happened this year. And I hope that the pictures we've put in front of people will be pictures that will initiate a conversation around that specific event. And I think that's what photography is about. Especially in the time that we're living in where there's a lot of violence, a lot of conflict, you know, it's important that we have an image that inspires people. If an image is able to transcend beyond the immediate event that it is documenting, that's something that can elevate it. It has to make you think, it has to um, create emotions. And I think it's also written on not only the voice of the of the photographers that, that made pictures around the world and, and photojournalists, but it's also to recognize the voice of the people that we find and the stories that, that are in the world that we want to tell to the others. I wanted it to, to have this like overview of what, what the year was. So every time something came up, we would sort of look at it and see what the issue was or the story was and try to see whether that fit to what had happened during the year. So we saw the things that made headlines, but we also saw a lot of really important, interesting, subtle issues, but they're defining in the lives of the people who experience them. Every single image that made it to that level is a good image, technically. So it's no longer about just judging around the technique, it's about the potential impact of the image uh, to society. It's about a plane crash in Ethiopia where there is a woman that is throwing dirt on her face in a moment of abject grief because uh, there were no remains of the plane that were found. And we were all conjecturing as to what that gesture might mean. The idea that she's throwing earth that might have been touched by one of her loved ones who has died is to me incredibly powerful. It's like a portrait, but it, it, it shows the suffer of the people, and it's something that the photographer has to be really sensitive to show it, and for me, he or she shows this in a very beautiful way. This is this extraordinary moment executed through a sort of conventional photojournalistic technique, um, but capturing a really profound moment of universal human grief. The grief is, is in this gesture, in this dirt um, that this relative throws in the air in her face. It, um, I, I, it, I'm having a hard time taking my, my gaze off of this picture. So in this picture, we're in Algeria, in Algiers. Um, it's May 2019, and we're looking at students protesting um, against the government. It aligns so many different faces, and the expressions and colors really help you bounce off and want to read each one of those. This particular photo represents the uh, need of youth to take charge of, of their future. In that picture, I feel as though I was there with them and I'm experiencing what they must have felt. It, it just sums up people fighting against authority, standing up for their rights, and coming out on the streets and resisting uh, or, or standing up for what they want. And, uh, and that to me was the theme of 2019. This photograph shows this young boy reciting poetry amongst the crowd uh, in Sudan. Even though he's reciting poetry, I want to say it was, it was a poetic picture. This image 
speaks to a most important development in, in, in East Africa. One would have never expected that young people begin to confront dictators and eventually um, topple them without raising a gun. And we see this young person is not shooting, it's not throwing a stone, but reciting a poem in uh, acknowledging, but also um, um, voicing a sense of hope. It shows power of the youth, it shows power of art, it shows, and it shows hope, and, it, and there's, there's a person smiling in the, in the front. It reinstates the, the strength that I think people need to see more often to be able to keep the hope alive, to fight these big battles that people are fighting. It was just a really beautiful, quiet photograph that summed up all the unrest across the globe of people being, you know, wanting change. Um, when families move to one place to another, um, getting rejected, getting deported, um, it's not just about the physical stress, it's psychological stress. This is somebody who's suffering from resignation syndromes. It's a catatonic state in which people go into. Uh, they've observed this across uh, migrating populations within Europe. It's a manifestation of trauma in which she wasn't able to eat. Um, and I think that's what the feeding tube is kind of referring to. This picture is very powerful because of the composition of the, of the hands, the, of, the, of the relative that take care of her. This guy has just kept pulling me in and in and in. And I just couldn't let that go. And I think for a lot of the other jury members, that was the power of the picture. It just kept pulling us in. I, I wanted to know more. I wanted to apologize. Uh, but before I apologize, I just needed to get to understand what is happening. This is a photograph of a young Syrian Kurdish fighter uh, in the wake of a battle in which he was very badly wounded uh, in a hospital bed being visited for the first time uh, by his girlfriend. What to me is very, very touching in this particular photo is the body language between the fighter who's wounded and his girlfriend whose gaze, uh, she's unable to look at him. He is turning his gaze to her, begging for a connection. We thought that this was a powerful story. Obviously, the United States made it a controversial decision to withdraw its troops from that area of Syria, and that withdrawal obviously had major military consequences for the inhabitants of that area. It brings geopolitics to a very human, um, simple um, consequence. Big decisions have consequences. It affects human beings. And to me, that's what I see in this picture. And, and it's devastating. There's a, there's a tension in that photograph. Um, there's a, a beauty in that photograph, an intimacy between the couple. It's really sort of heartbreaking to see what happens when, when, when things sort of go bad in the world and, and what the results are of that. This is a photograph that was taken at an international arms showcase event. Um, and the picture, according to the caption, shows a, 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 a representative of some kind of company or somebody that's involved in this arms fair uh, locking up a couple of rocket-propelled grenade rounds in a closet. I come from a continent that has seen a lot of civil wars. Um, uh, we, we, we blame uh, people that use those weapons to kill. Um, but, but those weapons come from somewhere. Those weapons are designed by people that are not at all even connected, involved in, the, in those kind of conflicts. It almost has a slightly glossy advertising nature to it, and, and that's where you kind of wonder, um, does it fall within journalism, does it not? But I think because it challenges that notion, is something that you know, pulled us into it. In my mind, I sort of imagine him in these halls of power, going in and out of these meetings, presenting these devices to people who will 
uh, you know, buy and sell and ultimately deploy them, but most of them will never actually understand how devastating it is to be on the receiving end of, of a weapon like that.